everyone and welcome back to another Miss Pollard Math YouTube video. Today we're going to be going over solving systems of equations by elimination. It's important to know that there are multiple ways we can solve the systems of equations. So we can solve by elimination, by substitution, or by graphing, but today we're going to focus on our elimination. We also need to realize what does a system of equations mean? A system of equations means we have two, sometimes it could be more than two, it could be three, it could be four, two we're going to focus on today, equations where we're going to see where they intersect. So if we graph these equations, it would intersect at a point. However, we're using elimination to determine where that point is. So once we understand what systems of equations are, we have to understand what we're trying to do. What are we trying to get? We're trying to get an x and a y variable. So let's look over our steps to solve a systems of equation by elimination. So we have our steps here. Our first step is to always make sure the equations are in standard form when we're working with elimination. We always want them in standard form. Then we're going to add or subtract the equations to eliminate one of the variables. Before we even do that, we might have to multiply one or both equations to cancel out the variable. So that would be the step it up type of problems, but for one of our basic elimination problems, we might just be able to add or subtract the equations to cancel out one of the variables. Once we cancel out one of the variables, we're going to solve the equation we have. Usually it's a two-step equation. Solve for that variable. It could be the x, could be the y. Once we get what that variable is, we're going to plug that point into one of our equ original equations, and we're going to solve for the other. So this does sound like a lot of steps. It sounds a little bit challenging, but once I show you, hopefully you'll have some clarity on how to solve these problems. So let's look at an example problem. So for this problem, every single time we have a problem like this, we're going to try first to see if I could just add or subtract the equations to cancel out the variable. That would be simplest. So let's see. I have negative 2x and negative 2x. It looks like we could do something here. Those seem like two variable terms that are going to be easily manipulated to work with each other. If I add these two, though, I get negative 4x. That's not what I want. I want it to go away. I want it to cancel out. So if I do negative 2x minus a negative 2x, those cancel out. So if we have the same coefficients in front of one of the variables, we are going to subtract to cancel them out. If we're subtracting these, we have to subtract all of them. We can't just do subtraction here, addition here. We're subtracting everything. So once I subtract, I get negative 2x minus a negative 2x. That goes away. Then I have a negative 10y minus a negative 5y. This becomes a plus because minus a negative is a plus. So that becomes a negative 5y. Negative 4 minus 6 gives me a negative 10. Now we're at a one-step equation, which is great. That's exactly what we want. If we got to this step and we had an x and a y term, we'd be in trouble. That's not what we want. We want one variable alone. So I'm going to divide by negative 5 in our one-step equation, and I get y equals 2. Now I got one of my variables. I got y equals 2. Let's plug it into one of my original equations to solve for the other. So I'm going to plug it into the second one. If you, if you choose the first one, you'd still get the same answer. So I get negative 2x minus 5. My new y is going to be 2, so I plug it in equals 6. Negative 2x minus 10 equals 6. Now I have my two-step equation. I'm going to add 10y to both sides. 10, not 10y, just 10. And I get negative 2x equals 16, so my x is negative 8. So this is why it was important in our prior classes to be able to plug a value in. If I get y equals 2, I need to plug it into one of these equations which I did, I got negative 10. I want to get now the x by itself, so I add 10 over, and I get my x is negative 8. However, we're not done. I can't just say, oh, my x is this, my y is this. I want it written as a point. So my final answer would be negative 8, comma 2. So this is one of our more straightforward problems. Let's try another problem and see if we had to step it up or not, or we could just keep on going with these straightforward steps. Now let's take a look at this problem. I'm going to see, can I add or subtract these equations to cancel out either my x or my y? If I am doing my x, if I add or subtract these, I'm not going to get 0. 
If I add or subtract these, I'm not going to get zero. So this is where we're going to have to use our knowledge of multiplying one or both of the equations to cancel out one of the variables. When I say multiply, I'm saying multiplying by an integer. We can't multiply by a fraction, or we're not going to want to. So let's see which ones we can multiply an integer by to cancel out. So if I look, I have 10 and 6. Can I multiply 10 by an integer to get 6? No. Can I multiply 6 by an integer to get 10? No. So I'm not going to be working with my x's per se, because if my y's, I can't multiply by one integer, then I might have to multiply both equations. But let's just take a look. I have negative 8y and negative 16y. I can multiply negative 8 by a number to be able to cancel out with negative 16. So I'm going to think, what number cancels out with negative 16? So what number can I add to negative 16 to cancel out? Well, I know if I do negative 16 plus 16, that gives me 0, which is what I want. I want negative 16y and positive 16y. So I have the negative 16y here. I have to make this become the positive 16y so I can cancel them out. So negative 8 times what integer gives me positive 16? That's going to be negative 2. So I'm going to multiply this whole top equation by negative 2, and I get negative 20x plus 16y equals, equals 28. Could I have multiplied a integer value to the top equation and get negative 16y and then subtract? Yes, I could. I, however, think it's easiest just to multiply it in and then add. Addition sounds easier to me, but either way, you'll still get the same answer, so that's perfectly fine. Now I'm here where I'm going to add these equations to get rid of the 16y, so I'm going to add, 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 and I get negative 14x equals 42. Divide by negative 14, and I get x equals negative 3. Once I get x equals negative 3, I'm going to plug it into one of my original equations. So I'm going to plug it into the top one. That's just the one I'm choosing. I'm not going to choose the manipulated one because what if I multiplied something incorrectly? That would just mess up the whole problem. So I'm going to plug it into the top one. So I have 10. My x is now negative 3. So times negative 3 minus 8y equals negative 14. That gives me negative... 30 minus 8y equals negative 14. I'm going to add 30 over. I get negative 8y equals 16. So my y is negative 2. Once again, this is why it's important. Our solving equations topic came in handy. So we're able to solve this multi-step equation. Once I get my x and y, I'm going to write that as an ordered pair. So negative 3, negative 2 would be my final answer. Let's take a look at a problem that might be a little bit interesting. <laughs> Let's see what happens. For this problem, I'm going to start by looking at my x variable. So when I look at my x, is there anything that cancels out with negative 6x that I can multiply this by? So if I multiply this by 3, I'll get 6x, which cancels out with negative 6x. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 3. So I'm able to cancel out with the negative 6x. So I get 6x minus 12y equals negative 24. Now I'm able to add their equations together. So when I add them, this plus this gives me 0. It's gone. This plus this gives me 0. It's gone. This plus this gives me 0. Once again, it's gone. So I get 0 equals 0. However, my answer is not zero. My answer is going to be infinite solutions. This is telling me that any point is going to be a solution to these two lines. These two lines then are going to be equal lines. They're going to be the same exact line if we get infinite solutions. Now you're asking, when am I going to get no solution then? You would get no solution if, let's say, your number here was like 16. If, let's say, that was 16, then this would be negative 8, and that would be a no solution. 
So whenever your answer does not make sense, that would be a no solution. Whenever it does make sense, and the variables cancel out, it would be infinite. So it's important, once both variables cancel out, that's when we're gonna have infinite or no solution. Those to me seem like the easiest, because all you have to do is multiply, and then you're done. You don't have to do any plugging in. So these are our special cases, as I like to call them, because they're different from the ones we've been working on. Let's try one more problem where we're gonna to have to multiply both equations so you see all types of systems of elimination. So now we have this problem, and let's look at our x's. I can't multiply eight by an integer and get seven. I can't multiply seven by an integer and get eight. Same thing for my two and five. I can't multiply two by an integer and get five. I can't multiply five by an integer and get two. So I am going to have to multiply both equations by an integer to be able to cancel out. So, I could do eight and seven and I could multiply each of them, but I'm gonna choose the five and two, you could do the other. I just think five and two are smaller numbers and might make my life a little easier, but we'll still get the same answer no matter which one you do. So I wanna to try to multiply each of these by a number to cancel out. I can see that five and two have 10 in common. I can multiply both to 10 and negative 10 to cancel out. So because both of these are positive, you get your choice on which one you wanna make the negative one. So if one was negative and one was positive, I would have just chose the negative to stay negative, the positive to stay positive, but because they're both positive, it doesn't matter which one you make, the negative 10 versus the positive 10. So I'm gonna multiply this by five and this by negative two to get that 10 and that negative 10. So when I do this, I get 40X plus 10Y equals negative 70. And down here I get negative 14x minus 10y equals negative 34. Now I'm back to one of our starting problems where I could just add or subtract these equations to be able to solve for my x term. So as you can see, we're just building on one another. We did our first problem. Then we moved on to multiplying one equation. Then we multiplied two equations. So we're just doing one extra step each time, but this foundation must be here to be able to continue. So I'm gonna add these. When I add them, I get 26x. My y's cancel out, which is what I wanted, equals negative 104. If my y's did not cancel out, I did something wrong. If you get to this step and you have an x and y term, you did something incorrectly. And when I divide, I get x equals negative now I need to take my x and plug it into one of my original equations. I'm gonna choose the top one. Doesn't matter which one you choose. And I get eight times my x, which is negative four, plus my two y equals negative 14. I get negative 32 plus two y equals negative 14. Add 32 over and I get 2y equals 18, so my y equals 9. I need to write it as my coordinate point to get the correct answer, so I'll write this big up here. My x is negative 4, my y is 9, and that's my final answer. So like I said before, a lot of these are the same steps, just building upon each other. We need to be able to get the two equations that have one variable that can cancel out with addition or subtraction. So that means we might have to multiply one or both equations by an integer to do that. Once we cancel that variable out, we solve for the one that's left. Once we solve that, we plug it into one of the original equations to solve for the other variable. And then we have our coordinate point where they intersect. I hope this was helpful to clear up how to solve systems by elimination.